Yo, what is going on Guardians and welcome back to another Destiny 2 gameplay video. Hey, in this video, I wanted to give my in-depth response so far to the Go Fast update, uh, which we had on the 27th. So it's now been out for a little over a week and I've had uh, literally dozens of hours to play it. And I, the night it came out, I posted like a quick response to it, but I wanted to do it, you know, do it its fair justice and uh, give a, a more thorough response, especially now that I've had plenty of time to play it, experience it, let the truths settle in, sort of um, have a weekend of trials, you know, seeing what the new meta might be, because obviously trials sort of flushes that out. People tend to play with, you know, whatever the best things are, because they want to win. That's just the nature of it. So uh, now that we've had some time with it, I've got my, my thoughts, you know, my ducks in a row, my thoughts all gathered. And uh, there's some positives, there's some negatives. I would say overall, this update is like seven steps forward and one step back, right? It's still progress. I have some beefs with some of the things that uh, that came with this, and I'll get to those a little bit later in the video. But, uh, you know, it overwhelmingly positive, I would say. Uh, a lot more good than bad. So let's dive right into it. Now, I, I, won't, I won't talk about trials in this video. I want to do trials in its own video instead so I'll, I'll leave that alone overall just if a, a quick response to the whole trials thing i liked it for survival i thought no radar i liked it a lot more than i thought i would and i spent a lot of time playing but as far as as far as the go fast update uh i would say 8.5 out of 10 is maybe how i would rate the update overall in terms of of what it it sought to accomplish uh, you know i'm rating that based on what they said this update was out there to address you know I get bothered when I say something nice about the patch and they're like, I see people who come into chat or on YouTube or on Twitter and they're like, yeah, but it didn't fix the loot problem in the game and the end game loot grind isn't there. Like, dude, 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 dude come, come. that's not what this update was about, man. They, they never said that was what this update was about. They said that specific problem is going to be addressed in future updates and future content. That's not at all. That wasn't even on the table right now. So if you're surprised by that and you're disappointed by that, then uh, that's on your end, not on their end, to be honest. Uh, that's not what this was about. So what, what did they seek to accomplish with this update? Well, they sought to increase the pace, break teams up a bit. Uh, make power ammo plays more prevalent right stuff like that and um, for what this update set out to accomplish i think they did that pretty stinking well to be honest so let's talk about the pace you know we are moving faster uh one of the negatives sprint speed itself doesn't seem to have been affected we don't seem to be moving faster with sprint speed it's more like your jump abilities and in your supers so that means that warlock skating Honestly, I mean, it feels like it's back. It feels really good. It feels like I'm actually moving around the map much more quickly just in my neutral game as a warlock. Titan skating is probably, I don't know, 80% back in terms of what it was like in Destiny 1, which is still really, you know, it's pretty quick. So if you're using your jump ability, then you're going to be getting around much more quickly. I like that a lot. Uh, you know, that was that's always been a part of Destiny 1 is using your jump abilities to get around more quickly. And, uh, you know, Titan skating was a thing. Warlock skating was a thing. Uh, Hunter's getting around the map really quickly with, like, Bones of AO and directional control. And, and we obviously don't have Bones, but you still have the directional, uh, the directional jump, which can get you around pretty quickly. So it's, it's really nice to have that movement speed with your jump abilities. And I love, I love playing Warlock right now, especially Dawnblade, and getting around the map so quickly uh, just in your, your standard neutral game. Now super movement was also increased so basically all roaming supers are moving much more quickly and it's noticeable it is noticeable and you know it's 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 easier to chase people down it used to be you activated your super people just run away and it's really hard to get a kill unless you unless you did it at like the exact right moment surrounded by people it, it could be difficult if if players just chose to run now you can really chase them down you you feel like a threat and uh, I'll, t I'll talk about dawnblade in, in a dawnblade State of Dawnblade video, uh, you know, hopefully this week. But uh, Dawnblade, oh my gosh, <laughs> the movement speed that you've got with Dawnblade right now, and the super is crazy. It's just insane. So um, yeah, I mean, Arc Strider is scary now. It is. Arc Strider is a scary super now. Praise the Lord, Bob Almighty, because it used to be someone popped that thing, and I just did not care. I was not scared. 
I really wasn't. It was pretty easy just to team fire it down with energy weapons and move on like nothing ever happened. So it's nice that the super is scary. Now the range on it is, uh, I mean, it, it, <laughs> the range on those attacks is actually like, it overextends its visual representation. I'm like, the pole wasn't even there, but he still hit me. Oh my gosh. So it's actually a scary super now. I love it. Sentinel hit registration still sucks. I mean, it's still pretty bad. I mean, still one out of every four of your hits is just simply not going to register. And you're going to feel pretty poopy about it. Um, so that's one thing I would love to see addressed in future content. If Sentinel, if the Sentinel Shield Super is going to be effective, we need to address that hit registration, don't we? Now, one of the things I love the most about this update, hand cannons and sidearms. The hit registration is so much better. It is so much better. And I've even gotten uh, some crispy four taps from the air with feet off the ground. And people are like, inner accuracy sucks. Well, it may suck, but it's a lot better on hand cannons and sidearms than it used to be. You raise that, um, you raise that baseline accuracy level, then the in-air penalty reduction is not as severe. So, I'm hitting a lot of shots even from the air, and hand cannons feel so good. It's so good to see people actually using them, hand cannons and sidearms, in the meta now, especially like in stuff like trials, because it's just more options. I love seeing people using more, uh, more options. So that's really, really cool. I love hand cannons and sidearms. They are awesome now post the update. Vigilance wing, hey. Did we ever think Vigilance Wing might be a meta weapon? Well, it is now. And some people are out there like, we need to nerf this thing, it can two burst. Well, you can if you land all headshots, which is, it's difficult to do. That's certainly not every engagement. It's good, yeah. Is it too good? No. It gives people another option. Let something be on top that's new, that's fresh. Maybe six months from now, we'll, we'll be ready for a change for sure. Hopefully we get a, you know, sandbox changes sooner than that. But right now, Vigilance Wing being one of the top things, not a problem at all. Let it be on top. Let it be one of the things up there. Last Hope is really good. I've seen people say, Last Hope spam is back. Woo -hoo. You know what? It's not Uriel's. The thing is, they're introducing things that are powerful, that feel good. Everything needs to start being brought up, not, not bringing them down. And they talked about that with the update. They're trying to bring everything else up, not hammer those two powerful things down. Because we want everything to be powerful and potent in the game. Absolutely. So, um, Last Hope is just now, it's just another option. So it's cool to see people picking other things when it comes to, especially things like Trials of Osiris. So the meta isn't quite so narrow. Allegro, Blue Hand Cannon. Oh my gosh, it's so friggin' crispy right now. It's another weapon in the energy slot that people might opt into using. So that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. It's, it's just giving people more options, and more options is good. Linear Fusion Rifles feel really friggin' good too. They sure do. Linear fusions feel great right now because of the uh, the lack of flinch. It's not a complete lack of flinch. It's, a, it's just a huge reduction in flinch. You can you can land some pretty crispy headshots through flinch right now with linear fusions. I'm having a lot of fun with them, and you'll see some of that in the gameplay uh, represented here in this video. So maybe try linear fusions out. It's good that we have other options. People are actually maybe putting down the Legend of Accuracy and trying other things out, and that's super good. Nightfall changes. So, you know, we've, we've done away with the time limit. We've got a score system. And uh, and now, Nightfall-specific loot. Is, you know, this week, the, the Ghost is pretty lackluster. But last week, it was a sniper rifle. It, it actually, I, I got out of the Crucible, and I went and I played PvE. I farmed Nightfalls. Like, I haven't done that in literally years. <laughs> so, it was cool to, to feel that incentive to go do it. So, that's great. In terms of things that are bad, ammo economy, I think this is just a band-aid. Uh, and they said, I mean, they talked about that even today with the Bungie Bounty stream, that they're looking to change the weapon system potentially down the road and how it works. Right now, this is just a band-aid. More power ammo is good. We're, we've got more power ammo plays. The bad thing about that is the way that power ammo is controlled right now is not so good. If you're playing a really good team and you're solo queued, uh, you're just going to get farmed by power ammo because they're going to steamroll. They're just going to start snowballing power ammo and every person on the enemy team is going to have power ammo and you're just going to get hosed because time to kill in primaries is, is pretty low, especially compared to the power weapons. So you're going to get farmed with it and that's not so good. So it's a bit of a band-aid uh, for the current problem. I don't really care for the ammo economy right now with power ammo too much as a long-term solution for the time being. I think it's, it's a better alternative, but it can make solo queuing 
uh, pretty frustrating if you're trying to outgun power ammo the whole time. You shouldn't have to... I mean, in D1, it worked because we all had special ammo. I mean, you had sniper against sniper, shotty against shotty. You had counter play between those powerful uh, weapons that could one-hit kill. And right now, it's just all that ammo is in the hands of the better team, and that can be frustrating to play against. So, right, like I said, it's a band-aid. It's not a good long-term solution. Spawns kind of got jacked up, but I think they're aware of it. The faster spawn system is, you know, it's keeping the pace faster, but at the same time, sometimes I got guys spawning directly in front of me, and, and vice versa. Sometimes I'm spawning directly in front of guys with power ammo and super, so that's no bueno. <laughs> But all in all, I feel like this is a fantastic update. It is definitely a huge step in the right direction. It has some negatives that came along with it. And, uh, you know, they've already expressed that they're aware of some of these things. So looking forward to future content down the road. And uh, looking forward to being a part of the process, uh, you know, of refining this game as a community. So thanks for watching the video, guys. And I hope to catch you in the Crucible.